This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. For those of you that have been with us for the last two years, you know, we talk about our wishes and our desires as we move through life toward the end of life. And I'm 80, so the end looks really close. But there's one part about that journey that we somehow don't talk about, and that is the cost of medical care. Uh, my friend Alan Burdick is here because he is an advocate for universal health care and all of the, he gave me something here just a minute ago that was unbelievable. Hawaii health insurance premiums are projected to skyrocket to $14,000 per person. Now, most of us don't make $14,000. And $42,500 for a family of four in the next eight years. So, Alan, talk to us. <laughs> Tell <laughs> us, what do we do? How do we, where do we go from here? Okay, well, this is uh, a problem that I've been looking at for a while, uh, starting with my focus uh, from a while back. Uh, first, I want to thank you very much, Marsha, for the opportunity to speak on this. Uh, I've been looking at healthcare care issues uh, with some degree of concentration since the time that uh, Obama uh, pushed through what we now affectionately call the Obamacare uh, law back in 2010, uh, which was to my mind, an extreme disappointment because what it did was um, locked in the kind of uh, health care that we have had, the wor some of the worst parts, some, some very good parts though, uh, but based on employment-based private insurance, although the key thing that he did do that has been helpful if you're not in a Republican state, is <laughs> uh, increasing the uh, ceiling of eligibility for people for, uh, to get Medicaid right. uh, from the federal government. And Medicaid, in a very, very gross kind of way, can be equated to Medicare. Uh, in well, the let's, sense- let's, let's go ahead. just add this one caveat. Medicare is the feds, and we pay into it right. out of our Social Security. Medicaid is the state. That, that is the, comes out of the state's budget, and the feds kick in X number of dollars mm -hmm. into that. But we have 350,000 people in Hawaii on Medicaid, and that does not come out of your Social Security. That is correct, but what I'm looking at is no. I'm just just the benefits. The, the, no, I'm I was just talking about the definitions. So as sure. you talk, people understand what we're talking about. Okay, yeah. I mean, what we're looking at is whether people are covered for uh, medical uh, needs, and for people who are covered by Medicare, which is of course a pay-in system. That's why it's an entitlement. We are entitled to Medicare benefits because we have paid in. That is something that we get benefits from. Conversely, people who are on Medicaid, which is, you know, there's a lot of federal money in, in oh, yeah. Medicaid, and it's administered by the states. It's a, it's a weird form of federal federalism, uh, and that's where the Supreme Court was able to, uh, you know, trip up uh, Obama's plan there and allow uh, gov uh, basically allow governors and or legislatures that are hostile to uh, what Obama was trying to do to uh, basically veto the expansion of Medicaid into their 
states, and that's why half the country uh, does not have Medicaid ex expansion. Uh, but, and we're getting a little sidetracked here, but the basic point is this, that what we have had continues to be uh, employment-based private insurance unless you've got Medicare or Medicaid to protect you. And what we need to do is get beyond that. And it's, it's amazing that, and it's really important to recognize that, uh, and this is really uh, one of the good things that has come out of Obamacare, uh, is that attitudes have changed very rapidly. Uh, it was barely two years ago that Hillary Clinton very fiercely stated, it was January of 2016, that the United States will never, ever have single payer. Never, ever. Okay, now, and what then, is single payer? Well, single payer is, and I don't want to get hung up because some, you know, we get technical difficulties in 14 footnotes on what it is, but single payer is in many, for many people, a way of an alternative um, way of saying Medicare or anything else where a single agency pays the bill. Just, oh. For example, as with Medicare, when you when you have a uh, an obli uh, when you have a uh, a claim, it is paid ultimately by uh, the government. Right. Okay. Although. Yeah. Recently, you know, Medicare, because of things like Advantage and so on, you, you wind up having, uh, you know, private insurance in there in, in complicating the thing. But the idea, that's why, but the basic idea was, was the notion, I mean, single payer is, gets somewhat equated with the notion of universal care. The idea okay. of universal care is everybody gets covered. Everybody in, nobody out. And that's what we're looking for. Currently, in the United States as a whole, we have, I forget the number, something like 30 million people are still not insured, even though Obamacare has been on the books for something like eight years. How is it that they're not in, not covered, at least well, partially? Well, partly because the Supreme Court let Republican governors and Republican legislatures veto uh, the expansion of Medicaid. And those people who are not covered by that expansion of Medicaid are often completely out of luck because they simply cannot afford private insurance. I, I don't and, understand and, how a governor could veto that, and what happens to their people? That the, They suffer. Ask Republicans. I, I, I know I, that you can't answer that, but it just seems strange to me. But anyway, that's the... So, we are going to... with Now, you are advocating for... Um, let me read it right. Health care planning. Right. Let, let, let what me, is, what oh, is, okay, what we're what trying is, to do is this. Uh, on the state level, we are trying to follow through in one way or another uh, to get the state government to focus on the need to get up to speed on universal health coverage so, and be ready to, uh, to get on board with universal coverage once it becomes possible. Obviously, with the, uh, the kind of control that's happening in Washington, D.C. at the present time, that's not going to happen. But we're hoping for some changes very soon. Uh, and we need to be ready in this state, and we are not by any means. Back in 2009, the legislature passed over a veto by Linda Lingle, uh, a bill that uh, eventually became uh, a very short chapter in uh, 
the Hawaii Revised Statutes, it's Chapter 322H, uh, that creates the Hawaii Health Authority. Hawaii Health Authority is simply a board uh, that's supposed to have nine members, that's an advisory board that is supposed to have a planning role, an advisory role to help the state, and particularly the legislature and the governor, prepare for the creation of universal health care at the state level. And obviously, alternatively, at the national level, if and when it comes, if it and, and, and you know, merge these concepts together depending on what's coming down the pike. Uh, the problem is that uh, the health authority barely got off the ground when it sort of um, crashed into Obamacare, uh, which was happening basically the same time that uh, um, the health authority was being launched in 2009. 2010, that was the time the Obamacare was happening nationally. And um, the legislature was, and Governor Abercrombie at the time, were focusing far more on how to deal with Obamacare, how to deal with the expansion of Medicaid uh, in our state. And, and as you point out, we have approximately 350,000 people, which is a quarter of our state population, is on Medicaid here in Hawaii. Um, so that's where the focus was. It's sort of like we can only look at one thing at a time. And uh, the Hawaii Health Authority has been rather ignored. And instead of having nine people, it's now down to three. And they're not active at the present time other than to say, hey, what about us? And that's all they're able to do. Uh, so we feel it's time to either revive the health authority or create a new agency with roughly the same mandate as the health authority uh, has had and get up and running in what? terms of planning. Okay, so this <coughs> is a, a planning committee. Right. And so <coughs> they would look at all this data here and put together a plan of how we move forward, is that it? That would be the idea, or perhaps a series of options. If if A, then B, if B, if C, then D, and so on, depending on what's coming from Washington. Uh, and uh, That's there, a scary notion. That's right. <laughs> the problem is we're not doing anything now. Nothing. What's happened in the last couple of sessions of the legislature is that the, the, uh, the state has sort of imported um, pieces of the Obamacare law as st uh, into the state law as state law so that if Trump and company destroy Obamacare at the national level, we have certain pieces still preserved at the state level such as, for example, preventing private insurance companies from uh, barring insurance, health insurance coverage for pre-existing conditions. Right. Or uh, discriminating on basis of gender, because it used to be that coverage for women would be higher, higher than, than, yeah. than, than for men in the same age group and so on. Things like that. Uh, those various... Um, general protections, there were about a dozen or so, uh, were put into state law and they're there now as parts of state law uh, so that, as I say, if Obamacare is destroyed at the, at the federal level, they are part of state we law. But that's it. it. Yeah, okay. Now, we are going to take a break and we will be back in a minute. And then we will talk about where do we go from here. Okay. How do you see us proceeding? <coughs> okay? We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. If you're not in control of how you see yourself, 
then who is? Live above the influence. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. Go to hungeris.org to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. Hey, hey, baby, that's you. I want to know, will you watch my show? I hope you do. It's on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock, and it's out of the comfort zone, and I'll be your host, R.B. Kelly. See you there. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Navigating the Journey, and we are talking today with Alan Burdick, who is an advocate, and I do say I mean that, an advocate for universal health care. Uh, as those of you that have been with us for the last two years, you, you understand that the last, according to the feds, the last day of life in the hospital, in the hospital, is about $10,000 a day. So that wipes up out your whole everything. And that was, that was several years ago. Who knows what the cost is now. So Alan is advocating for universal health care, planning on how the state can get from where we are to there. Okay. Right. I hope I got that right. That's good. <laughs> That's good. That's, yeah. That's where we, we are, and what we're trying to do is get state legislation that will uh, put an agency in place that will do the planning for this and uh, that will have an open process uh, that will look for uh, feasible alternatives to the current system that we have which is based on private insurance. And we, we know we have to go and, uh, to something like the kind of system that exists in virtually every single industrialized country in the world except the United, United States. States. Yes. And Gordon Ito's interview, and I, Is those of you, you who me? are yeah. subscribers to the Star Advertiser, you know that the Star Advertiser search engine is terrible, and you can't find it outside, but you go to January 21, 2018, and, uh, and look for the Gordon Ito interview, and you might be able to find it. Um, and you well, that's the one where, where we said it was $14,000 per person. $14,000 per person just for health insurance premiums. Yeah. We're not even talking about deductibles and copays. Yes. All right. And, and, and that's what, what uh, Mr. Ito is predicting um, for $42,500 for a family of four, as those would be the average premium level in eight years from now. And, well, you know, now, these are I obviously don't... not sustainable numbers. No. And so... If I am, you know, I say this all the time, nobody, none of the legislature, members of the legislature, have ever made a payroll. So they have no idea how to do that and what comes out of the payroll. So by law, if I'm a small business owner, I have to pay pre because of the prepaid health care. Now, if the premium is $14,000 per person, what is that going to do to small business? They can't do that per person. I they know. can't stay in business, pay all the other things that the state requires to pay, plus your salary, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. Uh, what, where we go, that, that is total bankrupt. I mean, small business would just have to disappear. Well, that's the problem is that if we continue the way we are now, we will continue burying our heads in the sand. We need to have a, a group of people, you know, who are 
smart and understand these kinds of issues and face them and, and focus on them and say, how can we do this in an affordable way that, that you know, that, that will work and, and, you and, know, do it. Yes. Now, there is one issue, uh, it's not mentioned here, but it's, it's real, and that is the cost of medical, of, uh, what do you call it, your medicines, your pharmaceuticals. Right. Now, the VA, unlike Tripler, because they're separate entities completely, the VA managed to work out a plan that they buy in bulk, they buy in bulk, and therefore their cost is different than, but Tripler is the federal, is under the DO, uh, Department of Defense. The VA is a separate entity, totally. So they get to buy this way. Tripler does not because it's the federal government, and the federal government just opens the door and whatever the price of the drug is, that's what it is. So that comes back to our planning. That's that, right. That comes back to our planning because so often the insurance company gets to say, oh, you don't need that. We don't, you know. The insurance company de decides. My daughter is a nurse, and she used to work for an agency where she had to deal with the insurance company. The insurance company is on the mainland. They've never seen the patient, and they said, oh, they don't need that. Right. They made the decision. And now we see how many women in America die at childbirth because the insurance company says, you get to stay in the hospital so many hours, and then you go home, whether you need to or not. So hopefully, hopefully in your planning, your organization that's planning universal health, that we deal with the insurance companies. Oh, absolutely. It has to be. Uh, and the idea is that the council or agent, whatever this agency gets to be called, uh, and this is an agency that presumably would be appointed by the governor, uh, would, you know, establish these kinds of minimum uh, levels of care and so on as part of a, uh, an overall strategy of, uh, of, of the, the kind of medical care that, that would be uh, propose, proposed uh, for the state. And uh, what we are looking at is basically starting off with H.R. 676 which is the Expanded and Improved Medicare for All Act that's been is that this? introduced. No, that, that's the federal law oh. uh, that we refer to in the draft bill that we've been working on for the that's, state. That's this draft bill. We're, we're working on a draft bill to ask uh, uh, legislators to introduce uh, in the state legislature, and that draft bill refers to H.R. 676, which is... Uh, the sort of gold standard bill, if I can use that term, that uh, has been around and is constantly improved from every two years. It gets revised and reintroduced. Uh, it's been re uh, introduced from a number of years by John Conyers while he was in uh, the U.S. Right. Congress, and it'll be uh, reintroduced by someone else uh, in the last, uh, in the current session of Congress, it has uh, over 120 co-sponsors, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it, it, it's gaining a lot of power. It has the advice uh, throughout uh, from the Physicians for Nat National Healthcare Program and National Nurses Association. This is you know a well thought out bill. This is not something slapped together, uh, and but it's it's quite brief, simple, and straightforward. And what it does is it tends to take it, it attempts to take Medicare, take the warts off it that have been added on by Congresses since Medicare was initially right. enacted, clean it up, uh, add things that ha are not there in Medicare now, like long-term care, vision, dental, yeah, right. and so on. Make it a better, uh, you know, a better product, and. Nationally, that would be for the elder people. We want it for everybody. everybody. 
but you know, um, uh, if you're a member of the union, they get in their medical care, they get eyes and dental. For the rest of us, that's separate. I we know. don't get that. I know. And, you know, we got to pay for all these extras. So, now, tell me, what would you like us to do? Now, I want you to look over here and tell the audience what you want us to do. As we are voters, we are taxpayers here in Hawaii. What do you want us to do? Okay, first I'd like you all to get up to speed on this. Uh, Google HR 676 and read up on uh, the, the basic elements of HR 676, expanded and improved Medicare for all. So you have an understanding of what we're trying to do nationally. Uh, look at the Hawaii Health Authority uh, and when you have a chance to talk to your legislators or candidates for the legislature, ask them point blank what they are going to do at the state level and ask uh, Governor Ige or Andrea if, if you run into her, what are they going to do at the state level to deal with the crisis in healthcare finance? and healthcare delivery in this state. And think on that and, and make sure you make that part of your decision-making process when you vote. Start with those things and keep at it because this, this doesn't end on election day. This will continue when we get into session uh, in, the, in the legislature. We're gonna have to ask the legislators you know, we're going to need a bill, and we're going to need to get that bill passed. We're going to need to get uh, an agency created, uh, whether it's called the Healthcare Planning Council or whatever it's called, and we're going to need to make sure it has the bureaucratic support and the support of the governor to uh, get us started and uh, and, and really ready to deal with this because, as Gordon Ito says, in eight years we're going to be looking at $40,000 for a family of four just for the premium. Yes, just for the premium. That does not include the copay. Or, or the deductibles. Or the deductibles or the pharmaceuticals. Or, the pharm or, or, or payments for the things that are not covered. Yes, so one last thing. Tell people... Uh, your web page for this information, how they can contact you so they can come on board and make this happen. Well, uh, one, of the, one of the pages is a Facebook page, Healthcare for All Hawaii. Uh, and uh, uh, the Democratic Party Kupuna Caucus uh, has a Facebook page and a web page also, and we will have uh, material on those uh, web pages as well so we can contact them and make this happen. That's right. And uh, Kupuna Caucus is having a meeting on Tuesday, October 2nd at 6 o'clock. And, and, uh, so you're inviting that, that, everybody to show up. Sure. The, and and uh, our, we have four working groups, and one of them has uh, health care as, uh, as its uh, main, main. Uh, okay. main task. Well, in its portfolio, right. Thank you so much for being here, Alan. I really appreciate it. And so we're asking everybody to absolutely come on board, make this happen. This is for all of us. Democrat, Republican, Independent, it doesn't matter. In fact, you don't have to be a Democrat to belong to the Kapuna Caucus. So show up and stand up. Take a stand. We need you. Thank you, Alan, and thank you all for being here, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much, Marsha. It's a pleasure seeing you again, and a pleasure to be on this show. Appreciate Aloha. It.